Hey guys, Silent Sale here. Welcome to a very special unboxing video for this channel. I don't really do a lot of single item unboxings for this channel, but you know, with the hype going on for Ghostbusters Afterlife still lingering within me, by the time you're watching this video, I've actually seen the movie four times now in cinema. And every time I watch it, you know, it gets better and better. I enjoy it more and more as I try and pick up special details that the the crew and the cast of the Ghostbusters Afterlife um, team actually has left within the movie to for fans to pick up upon you know easter eggs and all that kind of stuff so yeah if you guys want to check out my review which is um, spoiler free and spoiler filled um, it's on the channel you can click on the link at the end of this video if not um, you know find it in my video list <laughs> uh, playlist uh, so yeah and of course, if you're looking at the poster at the back, yes, that is the first ever Ghostbusters Afterlife teaser poster, um, which I also unpacked uh, as an individual video. So if you want to go check out all the details about this poster, um, check out that video because I actually go up close to the poster itself to show you a bit of the details that is in this poster, um, which makes it a very nice poster. Um, yeah, so anyway, guys, let's talk about this item here, uh, which is the Hasbro's... Um, Spangler's Neutrono one. Um, this one, you know, it wasn't called Hazlab yet. So this one was called the Plasma series, if I'm not wrong. Um, this baby was actually released in September of 2020, which was initially the movie's release date. <laughs> As you can see from the poster, it's I think it's inverted, but um, but yeah. So um, this item was supposedly to be released alongside the movie but because of the delay due to the pandemic the movie has been pushed back all the way to 2021 which we have already finally seen or could be seeing soon um, some of you guys in the world are actually receiving the movie only in january of 2022 so um, i understand how annoying it can be to wait while the rest of the world is watching and then there's so much spoiler content here and there so it's nice that some of the Ghostbuster fan sites um, give up a spoiler warning before they actually talk about certain things so you can click away that kind of stuff or unsubscribe then come back later that kind of thing um, so yeah so anyways beforehand we're gonna talk about this item yeah and um, I'll try to keep it spoiler free in fact um, I I probably won't mention anything that has not been seen in the official trailers so you guys can stay at ease you know from you know being spoiled for the movie so anyways guys the plasma series spangler's neutrono one so the term neutrono one is very new to me in fact so i i i've always known the troll as a proton um proton gun or proton one um, the Neutrono name didn't come about until I saw this product so because the thing is the proton pack <laughs> actually shoots up proton streams so technically it should be the proton one <laughs> I don't know but Ghostbusters fans have named uh, most of the um, parts on the proton packs the one and all the ghost traps pk meters etc etc all the all the technical stuff uh or the mechanical stuff on in the ghostbusters fandom um it's mostly named by fans then of course when jason reitman ivan reitman the official directors and of course uh, dan Aykroyd and uh, whoever is writing the scripts for the ghostbuster movies who who've come to accept all the fan-based names and officially use them um, in the movies and the scripts. So yeah, Neutrono One is now a thing. So let's take a look at the box itself. So the first thing you'll see is that the box is in the design of a rusty old toolbox. So I'm going to rotate myself here so you guys can see <laughs> the box design. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can tell, the box does come with that cordon yellow and black striped tape which we are so used to because of the uh, ghost trap design so yeah so the first thing first this this toolbox design is technically in the movie i think it's in the trailer as well um um you if 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 if, if it's not in the trailer i won't talk about it i think it's in the trailer but either way um so it's it's in the movie for a very brief moment 
Um, eventually, if you guys see it, I, I think it's actually spoiler co content, so I'm not going to talk about it because I don't recall seeing this toolbox in the trailers. But anyways, it's in the movie. Uh, it's just there for a very brief moment. Um, and eventually, you understand why the wand comes in this box. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, Spangler's Neutronal Wand. So um, eventually, for those of you who have yet to watch the movie, I will keep it spoiler free for you guys. So I'm just going to mention it uh, very hazily. So the wand, um, the wand that you see that's taken out from this toolbox in the movie, um, is not the same wand that is attached to Egon's proton pack. Uh, even though this product's name is called Spangler's Neutrono One, so technically, you get what I'm saying, right? Even though I'm trying not to say it as a spoiler content. Um, there is technically two Spangler's Neutrono Ones um, in this movie, and I'm sure from all the trailer's content, you can probably guess where both ones appear in the movie if you've seen all the trailers already so okay <laughs> enough of that so i'm gonna change um the camera's angle so you guys can get a very nice beautiful look at the whole box as we unpack it all right so we're on the top down look of the product itself so we have the iconic ghostbusters flight suit design that's recently been produced for all the recent ghostbusters products of course, the name of the product is in the flight suits name tag style, which is pretty fantastic. Um, so yeah, so then moving along, let's take a look at the rest of the label. I'm just going to slide the label out. All right, we're going to have the box put up here so you can tell the details. The details, oh my goodness, the details of the toolbox design is fantastic. So yeah, so taking a look at the rest of the labels, um, then we have information here regarding the Neutrono one itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and bend this down so that it's easier for you guys to take a look. Um, then of course we have details of the uh, extended stream nozzle. So yeah, it's just like the actual prop itself where you can actually uh, make them hard <laughs> and have it pop out. And of course there's the four different modes. We will talk about this later because I think a lot of reviewers didn't mention about the four different modes. Uh, if not, they did mention, then it, they probably won't know uh, where it's actually from. Um, there's only one um, product review that I've seen so far that actually mentions correctly all four modes. Um, so yeah, and then of course we have the uh, in intensify adjustment on the Neutrono one, as you probably can tell, uh, which is not actually used in the movies the live action movies, but it's actually used in another property. So we'll talk about this and this later. So let's pop over to the product itself because there's nothing else on the labels. So let's put this aside and let's take a look at the box itself. So um, yeah, the box is the design of the two box that we actually see in the movie. As you can tell, it has written Neutrono one on it. So yes, that's the actual term that they actually use it. And of course, in the corner here, we have the No Ghost logo uh, that we're so familiar with. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is this product is not a toy. <laughs> so yeah, so that's pretty funny. Um, and you know, con considering that Egon says that the Proton Pack isn't a toy for kids. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that, that was a line in Ghostbusters too. All right, so we're going to pop this open. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Neutrono one itself. So I'm going to uh, move the, the box here. And there it is. It's looking really, really nice. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me try and bend the box a bit more. All right. And of course, in the corners here, we do have parts for the stand. Okay, I'm going to put this here first. Inside as well, we have the pet, uh, the instruction booklet. So nothing really much to explore about. So we have uh, different instructions in different languages, the warning, warning uh, stuff as well, and how to set up the uh, Neutrono one, and of course the stand itself. So that's pretty nice. All right, so they even did mention that the um, the extended nozzle does need to be manually pushed back, just like the prop itself. So yeah. Um, so, and then of course here in the corner, let's see if I can pull this out. Um, there we go. Slowly but surely. Oh, 
Okay, never mind. I'm gonna pull out the neutrino one first. Okay, there we go. Then of course we pull out the stand. And I pull out the stand. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so this is the plastic stand. All right, so I'm gonna move everything else out of the way. Okay, so the Neutrono one actually comes protected with the cardboard sleeves at the side. So um, I'm gonna have to remove it. So this one actually requires you to pop it out and slide the wire out from underneath it. So yeah, I can toss this away. And of course, the back one, um, it just needs you to wiggle quite a bit uh, because it's actually difficult to remove due to the so-called masking tape design uh, that we see in movies. So, yeah. There we go. And of course, there is this bottom piece of plastic here. Um, so, just gonna untie it. Okay, so we've actually set free the Neutrono one. As you can tell, the nozzle is popping out already in the initial release. So you just push it in. Of course, if you want to pop it out, just press the green lever at the side. And there we go. So that's pretty cool, um, considering that, you know, a lot of the um, fans who actually built their own Neutrono ones, um, they find that this mechanism is actually one of the hardest things that probably is to create. So a popping out of the Neutrono ones nozzle. So yeah, that's pretty fantastic. And I actually really like the length of this nozzle. Uh, I've noticed that the, the ones that the fans built, the custom made Proton, Proton ones or the Neutrono ones, they don't have this head exactly like what we see in um, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I think they follow the 1984 design where the nozzle of the head is actually a plastic transparent tube as well. Uh, I think this design was only later implemented later on. So yeah, so this thing actually weighs quite a bit. That's the funny thing. Uh, even though it's actually a toy replica um, of the movie prop, um, the weight is quite substantial and it feels legit like the it actually feels like a real neutrono one that was used in the ghostbusters movies as well um so that's pretty fantastic now of course this is spangler's neutrono one from the ghostbusters afterlife design so as you can tell the handle is not the same as the 1984 or ghostbusters 2 edition this one actually has the shotgun uh clocking uh handle um built onto the neutrono one uh you know, considering that where Egon has been in the recent movie, there of course there's a masking tape. The funny thing about this masking tape design though, <laughs> uh, if you guys actually went to watch one of the interviews uh, for um, Haslab's, I you know, interview for, you know, the, uh, with the prop, prop designer and prop, uh, you know, mechanic behind the Ghostbusters Afterlife um, film, he mentioned that the masking tape was actually used um, <laughs> to to hold something he did um, accidentally. So it became it became a canon thing later on when they decided, you know, since they can't save the the neutrono one that was used um, during that scene, uh, so they they basically did the same thing to all the neutrono ones later on. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Fun fact. So yeah, and the Neutrono one actually features some metal parts like this thing here is actually metal. Um, this one, sadly to say, it does it does feel metal, but it looks a bit like it's a painted piece of um, plastic. You know, it does give that quality color that it feels like it's painted with plastic. But when you touch it, it actually feels cold, like an actual piece of metal. So that's pretty cool. This knob as well that you can rotate is actually metal as well. So that's pretty nice. Um, the rest of the stuff looks actually plastic and it's painted. Um, the switches definitely are metal. Yeah. And they feel very nice to click upon. Um, the intensify switch is what you use to blast the the neutrono one then activate switch is also metal so the rest of the things look a bit plasticky um although this part here does look like it's metal 
um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm I'm loving the weathering that they did, uh, even the clipper, you know, item here does have its own weathering on the the words itself, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the rest of the parts also look weathered. Um, this thing actually was um, metal. And of course, this thing that is actually used in the movie. Um, funny thing is, a lot of people thought that this was actually used to hook onto the belt, uh, the utility belt that they wore, so they can hang the neutrono one on the side of the, uh, their, 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 you know, the belt. Uh, so it's easier to move around or hold it while at cosplay conventions and all that kind of stuff. Um, but actually, um, with the interview with the prop maker, um, this hook was actually used uh, originally in the Ghostbusters 1984 movie to actually help um, prop up the Neutrono one from the Proton Pack so it's easier to pull up from the Proton Pack and it won't get stuck during the acting scenes. So that's a pretty nice uh, fun bit of movie information right there. Um, there's this light as well, if I recall. Um, this light on the Neutrono one initially wasn't exactly supposed to be some kind of technical thing. Um, it was actually used for cinematic purposes where they wanted to shine lights on the actors' faces, so they had built this thing in <laughs> to shine light onto the actors' faces. So that's a very nice, uh, juicy movie information as well, but it eventually became a thing as a particular um, technical or mechanical part of the Neutrono one, so that's fun. <laughs> so interesting enough, this prop, um, or rather this toy replica, was actually built with a metal um, V hook, uh, or rather holster, um, that's supposedly to be used to attach to a proton pack. So a lot of the cosplay fans of Ghostbusters initially thought that, oh, you, you can actually use this to your actual uh, custom built proton pack. And you know, go around cosplaying with this Neutrono one because the functionalities for this Neutrono ones um, beats Mattel's Proton or rather Neutrono one. Um, so yeah, I really had to get used to the word Neutrono one. <laughs> I've been calling it Proton one for such a long time now. Uh, so Mattel's Pro uh, Neutrono one actually um, doesn't come with this, um, and. Yeah, so a lot of the cosplay fans were very, very happy that you know Has Hasbro actually created this um, along with the the toy, um, but they didn't realize that later on, Hasbro Haslab is now creating a one-to-one -one scale replica of the Ghostbusters Afterlife Spangler's Proton Pack. So yes, guys, if you actually head over to the website and actually back the pack. Um, <laughs> yes, like I did, uh, I'm not from the US, but you know, I'm trying to get a Proton Pack myself because that's how big of a fan I am. And I don't have 2000 over dollars to spend on building a custom Proton Pack myself. Neither do I have the skills or time to do so. So having a Proton Pack built uh, to a one-to-one -one scale that actually works pretty much as well like the custom fan built ones. I am loving that idea and it, it, it costs one quarter what it would cost to build a custom made Proton Pack itself. So yes guys, um, HasLab Hasbro um, has actually announced the one-to-one -one scale uh, Spangler's Proton Pack. Uh, of course at this point of time that I'm recording this video, um, the unlockables for um, the un first unlockable uh, that actually contains the um, the uh, the cable that actually attaches from the proton pack to the neutrono one um, will be included and of course uh, the second unlockable as well which is the burnt mini stay paths and of course the marshmallow uh, gunk that you can have attached to your proton pack and of course there is also the stickers in both unlockables but really, really, what, what I really want from all the unlockables is actually unlockable number three, which is Spangler's notebook <laughs> on the schematics of the proton packs, the ghost traps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe we might even see some information on the Tobin Spirit Guide, who knows. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to that book. 
Um, then of course there are some lovely stickers that will come along with it as well. So guys, if you are interested, please head over to Hasbro's Haslab website. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below and make sure you back the pack if you are a huge Ghostbusters fan like me. I am definitely getting one. I can't afford to get more than one, but you know, having one itself is more than enough. I would love to wear it as a cosplay item in the future if I eventually get my own flight suit or maybe hang it on a wall beside my teaser poster. Um, which is going to look very awesome in my room in the future. So anyway guys, let's get back to the Spangler's Neutrono one and let's, you know, play around with the thing. So, um, first off, the battery pack is actually at the back of the handle, so you just have to unscrew this. And of course, um, you can just slide out the battery pack here. So as you can tell, the item doesn't come with battery, so you need three AA batteries. The funny thing is, this AA battery tray, uh, so I have my batteries here, so I'm going to slide them in, and you can see for yourself that the battery tray comes with that flimsy centerpiece of plastic, so it's not really ideal to hold batteries, um, <laughs> personal opinion. So yeah, so just got to hold the batteries in place yourself, pop them in like this. So any, any sudden jerk or force might actually cause the batteries to pop out. So this is one of the, the cons that I think uh, is regarding to the build, you know, for itself. So you just have to slide the battery pack in, and of course you screw it back in. So the interesting thing about the Hasbro's Spangler's Neutrono one is they actually gave you two pieces of the end cap for the, the handle. So the other piece is actually inside here. So I'm gonna pop this open uh, to let you guys see for yourself. Because they actually thought of cosplayers, which is fantastic. So there is this second end piece, as you can tell, um, that has this secondary um, portion where you can actually attach a hose to it. So for cosplayers who actually wanted to use the um, Hasbro's Spangler's Neutrono one as their main Neutrono one for their proton packs, they can actually do so. So this is pretty nice. So it's the same thing as the upcoming one-to-one -one scale Spangler's proton pack. Um, they actually um, indicated that you can actually attach an Alice frame to your proton pack in the future if you wish to do so. Uh, in fact, they are still trying to finalize the design so they can fit a particular um, design of uh, Alice frame in the future. Then of course, they also included the stickers, um, which I mentioned earlier, where you can actually convert your um, Ghostbusters Afterlife Proton Pack into a 1984 Ghostbusters Proton Pack. So with all the decals and all that kind of stuff. So you, you can even paint over all the weathering on the original Hasbro's um, Neutrono one and Proton Packs if you, if, you, if you wish to do so. But I would like to leave it as it is. So that's pretty considerate that they actually thought of the cosplayers. I guess that's where Adam Savage comes in because he himself was cosplaying Ghostbusters as he's promoting the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie on his channel as well. Um, so that's pretty fantastic. So I'm going to use the regular one that they actually provided since I don't have anything to attach uh, to this one. <laughs> so I'm going to put this aside. Here we go. All right, so once we've put the battery in, so we're gonna turn this baby on. So if you remember the parts where I actually mentioned um, in the review video, um, talking about Phoebe activating the Neutrono one in the wrong order. So let's test it out. So I'm gonna follow exactly what she did in the uh, Hasbro scene. If you guys actually seen um, the, the special clip that Hasbro uh, released, during the promotion um, of the Proton Pack, um, where they show Phoebe and Podcast playing around with the Proton Pack for the very first time. So this is the sequence that Phoebe actually activated the Neutrono one in. So she played this activate button first, followed by this button, and of course this one. So as you can tell, I've, I've done exactly that which Phoebe has played with. So I'm going to press the Intensify button to try and blast the Neutrono one. As you can tell, it doesn't activate because the safety switch is actually still uh, off because the Neutrono one has to be activated in a specific order. So if you guys are wondering why it is so well technically, the gear that was used in the movie is built exactly like this. So technically, 
Hasbro has created a wonderful replica of the actual Neutrono one that's actually used in the movies itself. Unlike the custom-built um, <coughs> Neutrono ones, oh, it actually switched off itself. <laughs> Unlike the Neutrono ones that built by the custom um, Ghostbusters franchise members, um, the, the you can activate all the switches in whatever order, and it will still blast uh, correctly. So. The Hasbro's Neutrono one follows the movie exactly. So this is the proper way that you can actually activate the Neutrono one. But I I I much like to do it this way. Um, so you can actually activate the the top switch or the bottom switch, either one first. So I'm gonna switch it off and show you guys. So you can um activate from the bottom, then the top. The top one actually activates the lights. Then after after that, you have to uh, release the nozzle. All right, so releasing the nozzle actually creates a sound as well. Then after that, you split on the activate switch. There we go. The lovely, lovely humming sound of the Neutrono one. So after that, then you can press the intensify button to blast the Neutrono one. You can see the lights on the proton stream. Red, uh, it's exactly like what you will see in the movies. And of course, if you blast long enough, the neutral one will go into the overheat mode, which is fantastic. So much like the video game, um, you can actually see the proton pack goes into overheat mode and it will vent itself. Uh, sadly to say, the one-to-one -one scale has led proton pack will not be able to vent. <laughs> but there are some very cool customized fan-made ones that actually can vent the proton pack with smoke. And of course, like the Ghostbusters, the video game, you get to see the proton pack actually vent in a very cool manner. So yeah, I really wish that the uh, Pets Bros has led Proton pack will be able to vent like that in the future, but you know I don't think I don't think we'll be getting the kind of thing for the price of uh, three hundred ninety nine USD. So, <laughs> uh, anyways, so we're gonna pop this back in. As you can tell, there is a sound for it as well as you pop the the uh, nozzle back into the the neutrono one. So we're gonna switch it off. And of course, I'm going to show you my favorite sequence of turning on the Neutrono one because it actually looks a lot cooler. So the first thing you need to switch on is the top switch, which actually acti activates the lights of all the Neutrono one, and of course the power on. So it looks a lot cooler uh, rather than you switch it on this way, and then of course having the lights on late, uh, later on. So that's really not that cool. So my pre preferred method is to do this. Then turn on the internal one, pop out the nozzle. Make sure you do that because if you don't, um, funnily enough, the neutrino one actually switches itself off. Then after that, the last thing is to activate the activate switch. This thing actually vibrates very vigorously. So currently, whenever the default setting is, um, you, you always activate it at its second highest uh, intensify level. So you actually can increase the intensify level by turning the knob here. Then of course, as you increase, the sound hums louder and the, the wand actually vibrates a lot harder as well. I don't know whether it, the, the audio can actually pick it up. So the vibration is actually very, very strong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether you can see it, but my hand is uh, shaking a bit from the vibration. And of course, blasting. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So. So yeah, so that's basically the basic play of the Neutrono one. Um, I'm just showing you the default um, Proton stream um, that they actually use in the 1984 Ghostbusters and of course Ghostbusters Afterlife. There is, however, a few different modes inside this thing that is actually from Ghostbusters the video game. So that's what we want to really talk about. Um, so Ghostbusters the video game actually introduced um, four different upgrades for the Neutrono one. 
Um, if you guys have played the game, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you guys actually seen me play the game, yes, I am actually a gaming YouTuber. <laughs> so I do have a whole playlist for Ghostbusters, the video game. If you want to check it out, you can watch me play the game um, back in the day. And yeah, it's still a very wonderful game. I played the Ghostbusters, the video game remastered edition for the PlayStation 4. So it has better graphics, I guess. Um, and of course, the you know the gameplay looks fantastic but sadly to say they didn't remaster the the um sequences where you know the characters are playing out a movie so that's not that's the only thing that isn't remastered so <laughs> but anyways let's talk about the four extra modes that was implemented into hasbro spangler's neutrono one which is related to ghostbusters the video game so i was really expecting to see these four modes turn up in uh, ghostbusters afterlife but Strangely enough, it wasn't included, but it was cool of Hasbro to actually include it into the Spangler's Neutrono one um, because it actually makes Ghostbusters the video game kind of canon uh, in that whole timeline, including of uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. So anyways, let's turn on this baby once again and we'll talk about the first implementation of the upgrade, which is the boson darts. So if you have played Ghostbusters the video game, um, or uh, you've seen me play it, you'll probably know that Boson Dart was the first upgrade in the video game and it is a gigantic blast of uh, Proton Ball. So first thing first, you need to do is hit the intensify button and quickly release it. So that is actually the sound of the Boson Dart. So I'm going to play it together with a clip from the video game itself. Alright, so there we have it, the boson dart. So normally, yeah, it takes about three to four blasts before you actually need to vent the proton pack. But you know, it gives, uh, the, the mode doesn't actually exhaust it unless you blast it like a regular proton stream. So we'll change modes here. So as you can tell, the nozzle turns green and you can actually hear the sound effects of the slime churning away. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So the next one is actually what we are familiar with in Ghostbusters 2 where they actually had a slime blower pack instead of implementing into the regular proton pack. So we're going to blast it here. There we go. And of course, the third mode that was upgraded into the proton pack was the stasis stream. So as you can tell, the nozzle turned blue earlier and you hear the ice crackling noises. So yes, what it means that this is actually a freeze ray. So very, very cool mode. I wish we could have seen it in action in Ghostbusters Afterlife, but you know, uh, I guess they had to pot it themselves. Um, so the last mode is the yellow one. This the Maison Collider. So this actually is a homing shot. So you have to blast the first blast and it hits onto a spirit. Then no matter what direction you blast the proton one or the neutrono one at, the beam will hit the ghost that was targeted with the first shot, no matter where it is. So there it is, guys. There is all four modes of Ghostbusters the video game implemented in Spangler's Neutrono 1. Alright guys, so that's it for the Spangler's Neutrono 1. Uh, if you guys actually have this baby um, yourself, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as you can tell from the size of this thing, this is as big as my head. <laughs> So yes, it is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the actual Neutrono One used in Ghostbusters 1984 and Ghostbusters Afterlife. Basically, it's just, you know, uh, Afterlife model because of the um, so-called masking tape and the shotgun handle on it. Uh, of course, the, the wear and tear on the paint job as well, the weathering stuff. Um, so that's pretty cool. So yeah guys, let me know your thoughts about the Neutrono one in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts if you're actually going to buy one uh, or you're going to build one yourself. Uh, I don't have a custom built Neutrono one because I don't have the, the skills, I don't have the time, I don't have the money for it. So yeah, I, I'm glad they actually produced something like this for a fan like me who 
cannot put in time and money for a custom built one because it's just far too expensive uh, and yeah so if you guys have yet to grab one hasbro has lab has reissued the uh, spangler's neutrono one uh, recently because of the announcement for the one-to-one -one scale spangler's proton pack um, if you've already backed the pack i'm sure you definitely want to get this as well because it does not come with the proton pack um, and the reissuing price of the Neutrono one has been stated on, as the website said, I think it was 129 US dollars. Uh, initially, when it was first released, this was actually below, slightly below 100 US dollars. Uh, I met, I was pretty lucky to get one of these uh, in my own country for about 160 Singapore dollars, which roughly relates to about 120 USD. So. Uh, I, I was pretty lucky, so I didn't really have to spend that 129 USD after conversion. I think it would be about 180 or 106, uh, 170 around that range. So I was pretty lucky to get it at about a decently cheap price. Um, that was on the day that the Proton Pack was actually announced. So a seller was actually selling it at a much cheaper rate than most retailers in Singapore. And I was pretty lucky <laughs> when I told him about the, Pro about the Proton Pack. Um, strangely enough, he didn't increase his price for the Neutrono one. Um, so I guess Ghostbusters fans in Singapore are pretty lucky as well. <laughs> so anyway guys, let me know your thoughts uh, down below. Are you backing the pack? Are you buying a Neutrono one after watching this unboxing? Or have you already gotten one? What do you guys think about the Neutrono one? Is it worth your money? Have you been playing around with it since the movie came out? Um, and you know let me know everything down below anyways thank you guys so much for joining me on this unboxing specials for ghostbusters um i'm a huge huge fan as you can tell yes i'm also wearing a new ghostbusters t-shirt right now compared to the last few videos <laughs> so yeah so this this is one of the few shirts that i actually got um so these were all fan arts and then of course the US company prints them on t-shirts um, legally of course with the um, approval of the artists um, so that's pretty fantastic so yeah let me know as well if you guys are going to build your proton packs you know custom made you know with whatever special designs that you're thinking about let me know your thoughts down below because i myself i i don't have the money i don't have the tools i don't have the talent to do so uh i wish i did uh i would love to have built my own proton pack but you know it, it's just not feasible the amount of money would have come around to about 2003 2004 singapore dollars in my country plus i still have to uh, import all the parts from UK, which uh, which most of you guys know, uh, Ben of Ken, um, and the other people who actually produce the custom made parts. Yeah, you know, they are all pretty far away from my country. It's gonna cost a lot to, you know, bring over all the parts and custom build a whole proton pack or a neutrono one, or even a ghost trap. I would love to have a ghost trap. I hope Hasbro in the future does do the PK meter the ecto goggles the ghost trap i want them all i don't want to custom build them i would love to have prop replicas of all the tech gear i i don't think they'll do a, a giga, giga meter or a giga meter whichever name you want to go by um the, i just want the ghost trap the pk meter the ecto goggles and i'm good and i'm good <laughs> and then eventually i'll just buy my own um flight suit have the ghost no ghost logo patch on them and ready to go as a ghostbusters cosplayer in the future anyway guys that's it i think this is the last ghostbusters unboxing video for now i don't know maybe in the future when the hasbro has let proton pack comes in i will definitely do an unboxing for that as well so look forward to that that will be in two years time <laughs> uh well technically one year plus because um you know 2023 isn't exactly too far away 2022 is just right around the corner so it's just a year plus we can wait we've waited for ghostbusters afterlife for quite a long time now once a while more anyways anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching the entire video if you did if you did enjoy make sure you hit the like button subscribe if you have not subscribed yet because well i like ghostbusters i like ghostbusters i love movies i might do more reviews if you guys ask for it 
um, or if I'm that enthusiastic like I did for Ghostbusters Afterlife, I will just do reviews for it. Uh, let me know everything in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next video soon. Bye!